Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our course. Next, we are going to show you some basic knowledge about HDFS. And just as the title suggests, HDFS is nothing but just a distributed file system. But what is exactly HDFS? Here, you can find that HDFS is short for Hadoop Distributed File System. And the main responsibility is to resolve the problem of storing massive data. Here, in real industry, HDFS can provide up to zettabyte level data storage services. This is an enormous data size, which is millions as much as the storage capability of our PCs. And all the data are distributed onto an HDFS cluster, which may contain tens of thousands of servers as an entirety. In addition to having the same features as other distributed file systems, it also has its own unique characteristics. The first major feature of HDFS is high fault tolerance or high reliability. HDFS automatically saves multiple backups for data stored on HDFS. If one backup is lost, HDFS automatically restores the data to ensure high fault tolerance. The second major feature of HDFS is high throughput. Because HDFS is designed to store massive data, naturally, it requires a relatively high throughput. But the focus is on the throughput of data, which is not necessarily mean the reading or writing process is in real time. Because real time means that it gives response within several seconds. For example, if the throughput is one kilobyte per second, which is very high, but it still requires hours to write a file of 10 terabytes or so. The third major feature of HDFS is large file storage. Just as we mentioned before, it provides up to zettabyte level data storage services. And that is why we say HDFS is the foundation of Hadoop Big Data ecosystem. In general, HDFS is suitable for big data storage, which has high fault tolerance and high throughput. These features are mainly determined by HDFS design assumption and objectives. And thanks to these features, HDFS can be used in many different scenarios. For example, it can be used to store website data, social media data, meteorological data, and a police data, etc. This kind of data are usually of large volume. And as we mentioned, HDFS distributed data onto different servers. And all the server together is called a cluster. But do all the servers in the cluster have same rows? Apparently not. And here we can see, although there are some other rows, but for the basic architecture, you need to know that the HDFS architecture consists of three major rows, which are name node, data node, and client. And this architecture has a name called master and slave. Master and slave architecture is a very famous architecture for distributed clusters, and we can find it in many distributed systems. So, a master and the slave architecture usually requires one active master node as the boss and multiple slave nodes to do the job in parallel. In HDFS, 
Scanning node, test the master, which stores file system metadata. So what is a metadata? As you can see, it records the file name, replica information, file location information, and so on. In general, a metadata is just a description of the data content. And you can simply regard the metadata as the index of the real data. And here, the slaves nodes are called data nodes. The data node stores actual file, and each file is split into several data blocks to be distributed onto different data nodes, or even onto different racks. In HDFS, each data block is of 128 megabytes by default. So, generally speaking, each data node only manages the data blocks allocated to its local server and reports all data block information on this server to the name node. That is why we say the name node is the boss because name node is in charge of the whole HDFS cluster with tens or tens of thousands of data nodes. Besides, as we mentioned before, HDFS make backups automatically, and to be more specific, by default, each file has extra two copies. So in total, there are three replicas of each file in HDFS. And all the three copies are distributed onto different data nodes as well to further improve the fault tolerance of HDFS. And as for client, it is actually the bridge between users and HDFS cluster, which provides user interfaces to access the HDFS. And then we can obtain data from name node and data node. And client returns the data to us. In short, Client is just a library of useful APIs. And so, this is the HDFS basic system architecture. But you might be wondering how does HDFS read and write data? And how to determine where it's proper to store different replicas? Don't worry, at first, let's have a look at HDFS writing and reading processes. So, here you can find the HDFS writing processes. As we mentioned before, client is the engine of HDFS. So, the first step is that the user invokes the APIs provided by the HDFS client to request to write, write data. After the system receives the request, the HDFS client contacts the name node. And the name node will create metadata for the writing request. And then client starts writing data content into data nodes. But we know that by default, the data has three replicas, so it can be done in a pipeline. And client only needs to send writing requests once, then HDFS can do the replication automatically. To be more specific, the HDFS client obtains the data block number and location information from the name node and establishes a pipeline with data nodes on which the data needs to be written. Then, the client writes data to data node 1 using its own protocol, and data is replicated to data node 2 and data node 3 automatically. 
after data is written, a message is returned back to the client. And when all data is confirmed, the service invokes the HDFS client to close the file. Finally, the HDFS client contacts the name node to confirm that the writing task has been done. And metadata persistence work is also conducted by name node. Up to now, we finish one writing process of HDFS. And as for reading process, things are quite similar. Again, firstly, the service application invokes the API provided by the HDFS client to open the file. Secondly, the HDFS client obtains file information such as data blocks and data node location from the name node. Then, the service application invokes the read API to read the file. Based on the information obtained from name node, the HDFS client contacts the data nodes to obtain the corresponding data blocks. And here, multiple data nodes may be contacted. Finally, after the data is read, the service invokes the close function to close the connection. So some of you may have noticed that no matter writing and reading, the client needs to contact with name node again and again, right? And as we can see from the previous basic architecture, there is only one name node. So what happens if the name node was broken? It means that although all the data nodes are still available, but the cluster cannot provide services anymore. This is called a single point of failure, which where the only name node is the single point here. And single point of failure is not tolerable in real industries. But how to deal with it? The method to deal with the single point of failure problem is called High Availability Solution, or HA in short. As we mentioned before, if there is only one name node, it is vulnerable. So naturally, we can deploy more than just one name node in the same cluster. But in order to prevent that the multiple data nodes disagree with each other, there is only one active name node. While all the other name nodes just stand by as the hot backup of the active name node to synchronize metadata from the active one. As for metadata synchronization, the generated ad log is written to the local host and journal nodes at the same time. When detecting that the ad log on the journal nodes changes, the standby name node loads the ad log to the memory of its own and generates new metadata, which is the same as that on the active name node. And then metadata synchronization is completed. While the active and standby FS image are still stored in their respective disks and do not interact with each other. FS image is a copy of metadata periodically written from the memory to the local disk. So it is also called metadata image. But how to choose which one is active and which one is standby? Now we can use Zookeeper to do the election. So, Zookeeper helps to elect 
the active name node and use the ZKFC to control active and standby name node arbitration. If the active name node is broken, ZKFC automatically starts a new election and a new active name node is elected out of all the standby name nodes. In this case, if not all the standby name nodes were broken, there is always one active name node. And so the whole cluster is always available. And finally, let's take a look at HDFS data replica mechanism, or namely how HDFS stores the three replicas. But before that, in HDFS, we can define the distance between different servers. Here, we say that distance of zero means that it is exactly the same server because it does not need any network data transmission. And distance two means that the two data nodes are on the same rack. And distance four means that the two data nodes are on different racks. Because we know that different servers on the same rack usually share same power source and they are put together. So that is the reason why we define data nodes that are on the same rack are closer than those on different racks. So if you can understand the distance definition, then the data replica mechanism is easy to understand. Because we need client to send requests so we can stand at the point of client to calculate the distance. And the first copy is placed exactly on the data node where the file is uploaded, or namely, the distance of zero. This is to make sure the best efficiency. But we need to say that if the host is a data node, then very well, the data is stored locally. Otherwise, a data node is randomly selected from the cluster. And the second copy is placed on the node in a different rack than the first copy, or namely in distance of four. This is to make sure the highest reliability because servers on the same rack may be unavailable at the same time because of power failure or some natural disasters like flood or earthquake. And the third copy is placed on other nodes in the same rack as the first copy. And if there is going to be more copies, then the choice is again totally at random now. All right, that's all we introduced for HDFS. And here is a short summary for HDFS. In this chapter, we mainly introduced what is HDFS and the basic architecture of HDFS. And then we introduced HDFS and write and read processes. And finally, we mentioned several HDFS features as well as some good mechanisms for HDFS. Hope you guys enjoy all the contents in this chapter and see you again in the next chapter.